Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here with Rasana Atreya. Hi Rasana. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Just a little introduction. Rasana is the best-selling author of Tell a Thousand Lies, which was also shortlisted for the 2012 Tibor Jones South Asia Award. Her other works include The Temple Is Not My Father and 28 Years a Bachelor. She is also the Alliance of Independent Authors India Correspondent, which is what we're talking about today. So Rasana, just for a, a starter, tell us a little bit more about you and how you got into writing? Um, I um, used to work in, in, in IT when uh, back when I lived in the US. And uh, when I moved back to India, I had two little children and, you know, the, I just couldn't get, get to work at three in the morning if the network went down. So the, I, I was forced to look at something else and uh, I had always loved writing. So, you know, I decided to give it a try. And once I started writing fiction, I was hooked. Oh, that's fantastic. And and how long ago was that now? Uh, about 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Um, so 10 years ago. And so uh, when did you get into being an indie author? Uh, actually, it's, it's uh, my story is a little different in that I did have a trade publishing contract. But, you know, I'd been watching how things were being done in the U.S. and, you know, watching uh, Joe Conrad and Amanda Hawking. And I really wanted to give it a try. And uh, people told me I was crazy to give up a, a, on a traditional uh, contract. But I was like, you know, so if I fall flat on my face, I can write another book and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> look for another publisher. I really wanted to do it. And, you know, I have no regrets at all. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point because I was in Australia when I first discovered Joe Comrath and, you know, Amanda Hocking, as you say. So similar time. It probably would have been 2009 I guess. Right, yeah, right. similar time, right? So I think that's what's happened is it did start in America and then it's kind of spread to other countries um, from then, which is fantastic. Now, I wanted, we're going to talk about India today, obviously, because mm -hmm. uh, that's where you are. And uh, many people, including me, really fascinated with India as a market. But I know many people will not have been to India. You know, I have a couple of times and I love it. Um, and some people might have outdated views of the country based on media over the years. Could you just talk a little bit for anyone who doesn't know about like what is India like right now, the economic growth, number of educated English speakers, that type of thing? Uh, let me give it to you as points, a few different points. You know, I, I think movies like uh, yeah, the Slumdog Millionaire do India a great disservice. Yes, we do have poverty, but we also have insanely rich people. And then there's also the rest of us, average mid middle class people who live like other middle class people around the world. And also in, in the Indian state that I come from, the joke goes that you first get an engineering degree, then figure out what you want to do with life. So, you know, as a result, I have a master's in engineering as do a lot of authors from India and there's so much social pressure to get, get a professional degree to you know to make sure that you can support yourself your family so which is it's odd I know but which is why you'll find that pretty much all the top selling authors in India have either engineering degrees or MBAs from really good schools so you know they get this degree out of the way and then they decide that they want to be authors and you know they, they do it and another fact for you about 10% of our billion plus uh, population speaks English. So that's a pretty big market for uh, uh, authors from outside and even from India, English uh, people who write in English. Mm. And I think that's, it's a really good point. I mean, I, I have read that there are more middle class Indians who speak English who are therefore educated because you you know, English is the main international language, isn't it in India? Right. Because every, everyone speaks a different dialect, but, but English is the language that everyone in India kind of either speaks or is aware of. Uh, the thing is that we have uh, 35 official uh, Indian languages and like 600 odd dialects. So, you know, you have to have a, a uniting language and that's what English is. So, yeah, a yeah. lot of people speak English. And obviously there's, there's uh, we won't go into the British Raj, right. but, <laughs> but, that, but that's generally the reason. It's a historical reason why English is the, 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 the language. And in fact, what's weird, if people come to India, a lot of the signs are in English, aren't they? A lot of the street 
signs. They are, they are, because you know, otherwise, if I were to go to a, you know, say the state of Assam and they had it in Assamese, I wouldn't know what to do because you know I don't know thirty five languages. I know like five, four or five, five. Yeah, so. <laughs> four or five, which is four more than I know. <laughs> but that's fantastic. And yes, yeah, so what I was saying there is there are more educated uh, middle class Indians who speak English than I think the whole population of the US. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of crazy, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, as you say, so many uh, very well educated um, Indians too. I'm always astounded at um, all the degrees. Um, so let's talk about the current state of publishing and books in India. So how do people um, buy books? What languages are they in? Uh, what is the market like right now? Okay, I'm big into points, so that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, so I'm sure you know this, but according to the India Book uh, Market Report by Nielsen, India ranks second in the English uh, language market in publishing after the US, uh, but before the UK. So it's a pretty big market. And uh, the interesting thing is that English books are sold in the newer glitzier malls in India, and they're also priced higher. And, you know, if you want regional language books you go to the you know corner uh, mom and pop market store uh, you know uh, shops and uh, so what kinds of books sell topping the list is really books to do with higher education uh, you know <laughs> so if you want to come up with a self-help book on how to get into top schools in the uk that's <laughs> something oh, that's that an idea <laughs> <laughs> that might uh, get you a leg in. And if you're looking at fiction, romance is big. And, you know, the really curious thing is all the top romance authors in India are men. And um, this is not, I mean, and they don't want to call it romance, so they call it campus lit. So it's all, you know, most of these are modern romances set on college campuses. And uh, the other thing that is very big in India is Indian mythology. You cannot get away with uh, from retelling in India, retellings, and that's big business. And um, regional language fiction tends to weave stories against ca uh, caste and social issues and, you know, those kinds of things. And... Um, and uh, the other thing is that fiction and regional languages are almost all print only and they're printed on really cheap paper. So they're essentially treated as disposable commodities. So, you know, the ones that people want to keep, the hardbound ones are traditionally religious or uh, philosophical texts. And... Uh, the other point I wanted to make was India's best, uh, biggest uh, selling author, Chetan Bhagat, who also has an MBA from an elite business school. He's put it to good use, really. So the, I think one of the reasons he uh, does so well is that his paperbacks are priced to move, almost use and throw. So, you know, he makes his money on volume. And this morning, I checked the price on his latest book, Half Girlfriend, on Flipkart. It is selling at, I know, at uh, 145 rupees, which is uh, $2.15. And that's low, even for India. So it's really hard to compete against that for Indies. But, you know, so, I mean, because you would not make uh, money on that. He makes his money on volume, but not, not to say that books that are priced higher are not selling. Jeffrey Archer is very big in India, as is, uh, you know, J.K. Rowling's and all, all the top international authors, they do sell well, and their books are uh, priced higher. And... Uh, I, I was also looking at novels from uh, other publishers and, you know, they're all priced around like $2 and $3. And the interesting thing is, and I think one of the reasons that ebooks haven't picked up in India as much is that they are, uh, the publishers price them almost, you know, like say 20, 30, 40% lower than print books. So it's uh, like they're driving people to the print books because they, they'd rather that people buy print books than ebooks, which, you know, doesn't make sense to me because you're in it for the money, right? Yeah, <laughs> so. I mean, that, that doesn't make sense to many of us and it's crazy how that's happening. Like, a couple of things there. So first of all, I've read some of Ketan Bhagat's books and uh, he's great. Like, I really like them. They're, they're actually quite short, aren't they? I would say they must be 60,000 words max. Like they're in, they're not massive thick ones. 
they're not well, 60 to I, I would say 90,000 tops yeah mm. so that's about that yeah and, they, and and they're very um like you said half girlfriend I think I read the call center one um right. you know young Indians meeting each other at call centers and clubs and things right. but it, it's quite urban like you say what did you call it campus lit it's right. quite kind of urban young people so um, just give people um some other names uh of Indian authors that they might want to have a look at um, in the different genres so they could, you know, just find out more about them. So, so, and I'll put the links in the show notes. Well, uh, Durjay Datta is another campus lit uh, author. Amish Tripathi is big in mythology. He's a huge seller. Ashwin Sanghi mm-hmm. and Ashok Banker. These are all men and very big sellers. And uh, I mean, there are a lot of literary writers as well, like Anjum Hassan. I adore her writing, but she's not very well known because it's literary fiction. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. And- those- do um do Indian authors sell widely in the other markets? So you mentioned Ashwin Sanghi, who I've heard mm-hmm. is like the Indian Dan Brown. And yes. I did, I've got one of his books. And like you said about the mythology, it's pretty dense on mythology um, rather than fiction. Like it's, it's quite a kind of dense book. So do these authors sell well in the US like um, an expat Indian market? The expert, uh, expat market, yes, but I, I don't think mainstream America would buy that because, like you say, it's very dense, but they have a huge market in India. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, uh, retellings do insanely well in India, yes. uh, in the uh, retelling of our mythology. Yeah, it's funny, so. isn't it? I, th- I equate that to the Christian market in the US, where the kind of retelling of Christian stories, that's basically what it is. Um, what the, um, what I was also going to note on the cover design, which is really fascinating. Now, I'm really hoping that at some point, Indies will be able to load a different cover per country. Because if you look at, I looked at a lot of Indian book cover designs, a lot of them are more colourful, I would say, than, say, the British designs. Have you got any thoughts on cover design for the Indian market? Uh, I think the reason, and uh, the reason that is, is uh, 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 books set in India lend themselves to that. The, those kinds of covers. My uh, books have pretty colorful covers as well. And I, I guess because uh, we wear very colorful clothes and, you know, you went to India, so you know what I mean, that it's, it's sort of, it's natural. It comes from there. So maybe that's part of that, you know? Uh, that is a good point. I must say, I, you know, I bought Indian saris to have clothes made out of them because we just don't have that kind of color on our high streets in, in the UK. You know, I love Indian clothes. I always wish I could get away with a sari, <laughs> but it, I, I'm not sure white girls can carry it really. <laughs> well, you, can, you have YouTube videos, you can practice. I can practice, yeah, that's a good point. Um, to go back to is the um, the digital market because of course uh, most indies are making most of their money out of ebooks. You mentioned it's not big at the moment, but um, 2016, you know, this year as we record this, Amazon's taken a jump into Indian e-commerce. Kobo's taken over Flipkart's ebook business. Um, so. What is happening in English um, and uh, sorry in digital and what's happening with mobile? See, mobile is the way to go now because uh, more uh, uh, Indians do, you know, most of the e-commerce in India happens on mobile apps and uh, not on uh, computers. So, yeah, that is the way to go. And I'm really hopeful that uh, something comes out of this because there are a lot of players that have also jumped into this uh, uh, digital market. There's Daily Hunt and uh, they also do digital books in regional languages. And there's Rockstand, which is the other one and juggernaut i'm really watching this closely because uh, the chiki sarkar the uh, woman one of the people who started this used to be the publisher of uh, penguin random house india and she quit to start this up so i mean if she cannot get it going i don't think there's much hope for, for the rest of us you know so she does know what she is doing and we're watching her 
So, and this is going to be an ebook only thing for now. I don't know if they'll uh, come up with uh, uh, anything else later on. But they have an interesting model, as does Daily Hunt. Daily Hunt signed up Ashwin, uh, Amish Tripathi, and he's another very big author. And what they're doing is they're selling chapters. So, uh, because a lot of pe- uh, people in India don't have credit cards, by some estimates, about only two percent of the population does, and people are very wary of using credit. cards. Card. So what what they do is that um, they you use carrier billing. So now if yes. you were to right, yeah. so if you were to say buy a book on da- Daily Hunt, uh, they don't want to price it too high that people you know don't because it it goes to your mobile carrier. So so they are selling chapters. Uh, in series at say 49 rupees and they say they they uh, uh, see a lot of market there and even in uh, regional languages mostly hindi because that's such a big market and malayalam that's the other language and they say they they have good sales that way so that that's interesting so these are micro payments and what you mean by carrier billing is people get them on their phone and it's charged to their mobile phone account now that's right. and this is what's going to happen in Africa, the rest of Asia, South America, because of the fact that people, the the mobile economy, right? Like even Mm -hmm. in India, in some of the poorest areas, you still will see people with a cell phone in the market, you know, selling some vegetables, but they'll still have a cell phone because mobile, it might not be a smartphone yet, but it's, you know, people do mobile phone economy, don't they? So that seems to me the most obvious place for it. Oh, absolutely. By some estimates, about 900 million people have smartphones, or actually there are 900 million uh, smartphones out there. And um, according to statistics released by Daily Hunt, they say that up to 42% of people who own uh, smartphones have done uh, um, e-commerce transactions at least once. So, you know, yeah, that's I, pretty I- big big market out there. Mm, And I listened to a a documentary on Amazon India, and they were saying that in these uh, areas where there is no, uh, you know, where it's hard to get deliveries and stuff, like there might be one person in the village who has the smartphone and then people will go to them and use their smartphone and get things delivered to the local place. It was fascinating. I'll link to it in the show notes. A a really amazing documentary about how, although Indians, uh, uh, you know, doubt credit cards or don't have credit cards, they're still figuring out ways to do internet to commerce oh absolutely yeah. yeah and in such an entrepreneurial nation i'm always impressed by <laughs> pretty much everyone's an entrepreneur in india right <laughs> oh yeah yeah they, they find ways around things you know yes exactly they do find ways around things but but these micro payments and you said um selling volume this to me is the way forward it's not going to be selling a 12 dollar 99 ebook to indians it's going to be like you say a 49 rupee per chapter that um, so how do we get on Daily Hunt or this juggernaut? Uh, juggernaut is really a traditional publisher. And in, in India, you don't need to go uh, via literary agents. You can just uh, submit directly. Though it really does help if you have the uh, email addresses of the publishers. A lot of them will respond to you. And so that's really the way to go. And uh, Daily Hunt actually has a submission process. So they, they you can just go to their website. I think it's submissions at dailyhunt.com or something. And uh, they will get back to you. Mm. That's what they told me. I I talked to them about that. So. Okay, great. So have you used it yourself? I they have invited me, but I haven't gotten around to it. I will. That's what on my to do list. Yeah, we yes. all have these big to do lists, obviously. Yes. Okay, so that that's super. I'm very excited about that. So let's talk about print. Um, there were obviously, and I way back when I was in Australia talked to Cinnamon Teal and Pothy, uh, who I see are still the sort of uh, people there. Create Space right now does not have an Indian setup, but I've heard rumours about it. Um, can you talk about print on demand in India? Uh, see, the thing is that print on demand, uh, though cinnamon deal and uh, poti are good alternatives, they're still very expensive because you, if you were to price your book at you know what they give you you would not be able to sell too many copies so a lot of people that i know go to local printers and get their books printed and then they've been trying to sell it from their websites because it's much cheaper that way but what i am 
uh, I mean, I, I, like you say, that the, the, there are rumors that Create Space is working out a deal to come to India and, you know, ha- have a, a local POD. Ingram's Park is already uh, doing that as well. Mm-hmm. So I am very hopeful about that. But, you know, the only thing is that... Um, yeah, no, that, so that's a good thing. If they work with local uh, printers, that's a good thing. It uh, brings the prices down, so both for Indian authors and for non-Indian authors. So mm. I'm waiting on that. Yeah, no, I think it's it's really interesting. So just back on pricing. So you mentioned uh, a Ketan Bhagat uh, fiction would be around 145 rupees, which is mm-hmm. for a full-length fiction. Um, mm-hmm. How much would a full-length non-fiction be so that people know to put their pricing into Amazon and Kobo and iBooks? No, uh, non-fiction, self-help books, educational books, people are willing to spend, okay? So you can price your books higher, you know, three 300 rupees, 400 rupees, people will buy those books. So That's fiction right. is not, you know, anything that uh, is to do with education, people will spend in India. So I think, I mean, I think that's true in general. I certainly price my non-fiction higher than my mm-hmm. fiction because you would, I mean, and as a reader, I always think if I get three things from this book, like that will help me in my life, then it's worth paying extra money for. So um, I see what you mean there. So yeah, nonfiction is a good idea. Um, also, you mentioned, I saw in one of the articles you've written about Vanity Press um, kind of springing up uh, everywhere. What's happening with that? You know, I... It, 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 I have a big problem. Actually, I've written a huge uh, post on that, and that's one of my uh, most popular posts. And uh, the problem is that a lot of people are unaware of what they're getting into, so they don't do research. And my problem is that uh, um, these uh, vanity publishing companies call themselves self-publishing outfits and confuse people, like, you know. And as I know Ali carefully vets assisted publishing and, you know, so, um, and they do endorse them, but I don't know that we have such... uh, great deals in India. I, I don't know, as far as I'm concerned, if you pay upfront and then you buy your ISBN from them, it's like they own your book, right? Because they, then they say uh, they pay you royalties. So if you're both paying for uh, uh, the initial fees and then also getting royalties from them, I don't think that's a very good deal for authors. So, and, and you know, it is interesting that because we don't really have the same kind of regulation in India that the U.S. has, I don't know about the U.K. because I've never uh, lived there. So it, it, it makes it pretty sad because I did a, a, a session on self-publishing at the Hyderabad Literary Festival last year and an elderly gentleman stayed back after the session to talk to me and he his English was very shaky so he spoke to me in Hindi and he was close to tears because he said he uh, he's uh, published with one of the biggest vanity publishers in India and it was uh, uh, you know associated with one of the, the biggest uh, trade publishing uh, um, companies and I, they're no longer together you know what I'm talking yes. about Yes. So <laughs> we, don't, don't, we don't mention them by name, but yes, we know no, the one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so he said that um, they pursued him relentlessly when he first made contact, and uh, unable to, you know, stand the pressure, in a, he gave in and he published the, his book of poetry with them. And then he had at least two hundred friends and family buy books from them. But the vanity publisher claims that no sales were made, and they've stopped taking his calls. They won't respond to his email. So, you know, and and, and, uh, because he got the ISPN from him, he doesn't own rights to his book. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm not very... um, And a lot of uh, vanity publishers who claim they're not vanity publishers, but they are really uh, assisted uh, publishers, they do pretty much the same thing. So I... As far as the Indian market is concerned, I honestly don't see a difference. Mm. So I'm very skeptical about that. Yeah, but otherwise, Indian authors can publish through KDP. They can use draft to digital You can use Kobo. There's no restrictions in that way. Except for iBooks. Except for iBooks, yeah. Which you can go through uh, Smash to digital Yeah, or right. Smash or, Right. 
yeah, yeah. so no but that's good and uh I, I I'm excited to see you know a new sort <laughs> of um different different voices that's why I'm really keen to be talking to people like I had an author from Nigeria on and you know I, I want us to start reading different things uh, you know all over the world I think that's fascinating um okay so um yeah we talked a bit about the cell phone um side of things which is exciting I read on another post that you wrote on the Alliance of Independent Authors that 50 percent of the Indian population is under 25 so what does that mean for uh, writers and publishers is. This is the segment of uh, the population that is internet savvy. Uh, they're most likely to have smartphones uh, and they're comfortable downloading apps and using them. And like I mentioned before, most e-commerce in India happens on mobile phones as opposed to computers. So yeah, the, the, this is a very positive thing for indie authors if you're, if you're looking to sell in India. And the other thing is that, you know, you uh, really need to look at different things, uh, different strategies in India. WhatsApp is very big in India. So it's a, it's a mobile messaging app. So if you can figure out ways to leverage this, that, you know, that could get uh, you some more visibility as well. So Yeah, WhatsApp, I must say, I've done one thing on WhatsApp, but I haven't used it loads. I also read that Facebook is actually surprisingly big in India. It is. It, it really is. Facebook and WhatsApp are the big ones, yeah. Okay, so how how do you recommend that people use those sites for marketing to Indians specifically? Uh, we are still figuring it out, quite honestly. And see, see, as of now, I mean, I I we have groups for um, uh, I have a group for with uh, my college friends and uh, family and friends, you know, different groups like that. But authors are not using it as yet, and. If you can be the first one to use it, I guess that that can get you a, a leg in. So yeah. I, I, that's my goal for the next year to figure these things out. Oh, that's super. <laughs> well, well, we'll be excited about hearing back from you. Um, but ha So how is book marketing done at the moment then? At the moment, book marketing is done uh, through book bloggers. You just uh, seek reviews from them and, you know, ask them to cross post to Amazon and uh, and uh, to Goodreads. And what, I, the thing is that uh, since Indian authors cannot upload directly to iBooks as yet, that's one advantage that non-Indians will have there if you've uploaded directly. Because, you know, if, if you have control over the dashboard, you can quickly move the price, uh, uh, raise the price up or down or promote books that, you know, uh, Indian authors don't have access to as yet. So that's uh, another thing. But um the other thing is that there is this still the stigma uh, stigma against indie authors. So you don't really have access to the same things that uh, non indies would in India. But uh, my uh, my situation is a little different in that I was uh, one of the first uh, people to sort of adopt self publishing and write about it in a major Indian newspaper and sort of without intending to, I seem to have become the voice of self publishing in India. So I do get a lot of visibility. So, <laughs> Which is and, fantastic because, you know, you're intelligent, articulate, you've, put, you've <laughs> traditionally published, you're not like a rah-rah, you're not a Joe Comrath actually, <laughs> which, which <laughs> makes you quite acceptable, I think, to the establishment in a good way, you know, because you, and you speak at all these literary festivals, don't you, which generally don't invite indies. Uh, they don't, yeah. But yeah, I've been um, to the Jaipur Literary Festival, which is the biggest festival in India. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I, I guess I've been really lucky that way. But but then that only happens because I was the first person to do it and, and I'm the most visible. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, more other Indies don't really get that chance. But then a lot of other literary fe festivals are happening in India and they're catching up. So I hope that more and more Indies are invited there and you know things happen mm. for them as well. I want to come to Jaipur Literary Festival. It's one of my on my bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a madhouse. I tell you it's a madhouse and you know it's it's like how you would uh, authors get mobbed in India and mm. in, in, in the Jaipur Literary Fest authors get mobbed and I, I I spoke to a couple of American authors and they were just astounded uh, astounded because they said this would never happen in America and I, I do know that 
So mm. it's 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 quite different. I authors are treated like celebrities in India. So if you make it big, yeah, if you make it big, yeah. And and what's interesting, I think. It, there is a great respect, like you said about the education. There is a respect for people who write books that, that is. I think is has kind of been lost in the West, <laughs> <laughs> which is nice. So I did want to ask you um, about getting a traditional publishing deal in India. As you said, you don't need a literary agent; you can approach directly. I've seen you're also working with is it Read Out Loud, um, uh, another company. Uh, um, that was only for my audiobook. Oh, uh, they okay. Were- yeah, no, only for the audiobook. I had them produce my book. Oh, okay. So, so tell us about how can you know if if self published authors like myself would actually rather sell rights. What would be the way to go about doing that uh, for India? You know, make a list of um, publishers in India, and uh, you you need to also talk to them about what kind of distribution uh, networks they have because there are multiple. Because we have so many states and so many different languages, it's it's almost uh, you know the, the English language mar- uh, segment uh, has also has multiple distribution networks, and regional languages have their own. So if, if you're getting into translations, you it's it, it's a little complicated, really. Um, you either need to be here or need to have an Indian contact to actually sell a lot of copies. I'm being a little honest here. Mm. And, uh, but the, having said that, if you can get a trade publisher to, you know, just uh, buy your Indian rights, they will take care of that for you. And since you don't have to go, uh, go through literary agents, it's a little easier. But having said that, we do have literary agents in India as well. Mm. So, so you can uh, go through them as well. Yeah, no, I I am interested. I think it's the print distribution, as you say, it's a very big country um, Mm -hmm. and complicated. And like you say, you kind of have to be there unless it's just digital. And at the moment, the digital sales are tiny. So uh, this is the kind of thing. So what would you see as the next, you know, do you think it's going to take five years for digital to reach US volumes? Or is it going to be 10 years? What do you what's your opinion? I hope five years, but um, I, you know, Chiki Sarkar, uh, the publisher of uh, uh, the the owner of Jag- Jagannath, let's say, she she is uh, because she's involved. I'm hoping it's five years, and uh, since yeah. I, I'm I'm really hoping and uh, shooting for five years. Yeah, no, I, that sounds good to me too. I I do think that you know people. What's so lovely about talking to you is I think it's like 2009 in America. Do you do you think do you sense that that's kind of where we are? It's almost like it's before self publishing really takes off before digital really takes off um you know the kindle has really only been out in the in india for not very long right and people it's not a big chunk of the market yet it's not a big chunk of the market even though they're aggressing uh, aggressively promoting it you know they have big name authors selling it on uh, tv um the it may or may not take off, but e-books are here to stay because people, you know, like I said, most things happen on our mobile apps, and you can still download an app for for the Kindle or for your smartphone, and or or an iBooks app, so you can still read it that way. That's see, interesting. So yeah. the adverts they're doing on TV are they advertising the Kindle device or are they advertising the Kindle store so that people are they saying you can get this on your phone type of thing? They're uh, advertising the device, not the store. Yeah. That's really interesting. I wonder if they'll change the direction of that uh, over time. I I hope so, because Amazon has recently applied for a semi-open digital wallet license. So that means they are looking to do more with e-books, and I certainly hope you know, they are able, uh, we are all able to sell more e-books that way. Yeah. And... Oh, what was I going to ask you? Oh, I know. Um, and what about audiobooks? Is that happening at all yet? Audiobooks, or 
are happening to some extent, but not not as much as I would have liked. And uh, see, the thing is that in the US, uh, I don't know about the UK, but in the US, people go on long drives or work out or, you know, that's where they listen to audio books. And in India, it's a little different because uh, I, I, I don't know. I think another problem is that uh, because most uh, of uh, everything that people do in India is on smartphones, there's also a lot of distractions. So, you know, you're reading an audiobook and someone pings you on WhatsApp or Facebook. So maybe people are buying less uh, books because of that. But uh, uh, I hope the next five years are going to change this. Yeah, exciting times. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, and then my final question. You've talked a bit about how we can do various marketing. And uh, I've mentioned before, my next book, Destroyer of Worlds, is set in India. So I'm very excited about that and promoting it um, there. But obviously, it's it's a, it's a mainstream thriller. Um, but um, is there any paid advertising? I mean, you've talked about WhatsApp, Facebook. I mean, it, it, it doing Facebook ads a good idea in India? Uh, I mean, obviously the return is it's going to be unlikely, but if one wants to grow an audience, uh, do you have any other specific tips, especially if a book is, you know, does have the Taj Mahal on the cover? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Facebook ads is a good idea and uh, that's what I'm planning to do as well. And uh, since Excuse me. Since you are so well known in indie publishing, I would suggest that you freelance article for uh, articles for major Indian newspapers like the Hindu, the Times of India, the Hindustan Times. You'll get a lot of exposure that way. And if you um, can, uh, like I said, if you can get your uh, uh, sell your Indian rights to a local publisher with a access to a good distribution network that's important that would be good too uh, the other thing is that there are a lot of distributors who are actually offering services so they are offering to place your books in bookstores and uh, as uh, I mean I'm still investigating this and I do plan to do that myself the, uh, tie up with the distributor to have my books uh, put in bookstores and another thing that you could do is that a Cinnamon Teal says that they can do audiobooks for as little as $100. Wow. So, yeah, so if, if the, your book is uh, for the Indian market, you know, you can do it with an Indian editor and it's really not a lot of money. So you could get some exposure that way as well. In English or in, in Hindi? In, Engl in English too. Yeah, oh, in English too. How interesting. And, that, and that's actually really interesting because there's a lot of Indians who speak English whose English sounds like my English or, uh -huh. you know, it's not, or an American English. Yours is more uh, American accented, I think, than British. Um, but that's really an interesting point. I wonder whether it's worth looking into that in general for audiobooks. I think so, because, you know, it, it doesn't really cost you that much. It's hundred dollars, right? Uh, compared to an audiobook in the US or the UK, I'm sure it costs a lot more. Yeah, well, it's a couple of thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, dollars usually yeah that's fascinating you've given us some really interesting <laughs> things to think about is there anything else that you want to share um before we go about uh, about the indian market or anything else uh, I just wanted to mention one more thing that uh, certain uh, bookstores are also getting into this uh, vanity publishing thing. So whether it's a good thing or bad thing, you can decide. So what they're doing is they're offering to place your books in their stores, chain stores. And uh, some places are charging as much as $12,000 and they claim that, you know, you, uh, you'll get premium placement. My concern with this is that, you know, because they're not wetting these books, obviously you're not going to be placed alongside a Dan Brown or you know J.K. Rowling. So that means you'll probably get your own self-publishing uh, section, which kind of devalues your books. On the other hand, if you can drive people to buy your books, I don't know, uh, and they actually like it and read it, that might make a difference. So that's that's something new in India. And I haven't really heard of this in the US or the UK. So mm. the book, bookstores doing that, chain stores. Yeah, no, that is interesting. As you say, a chain store. I've heard of some independent bookstores doing that, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but not chain stores like Borders, for example. Right. Um, I mean, Barnes & Noble. Borders went bust, didn't they? <laughs> right. um, anyway, so tell us where people can find you and your books online. 
Oh, I'm pretty much everywhere you can find books. I'm on uh, iBooks and uh, Akobo and uh, Amazon. And I have a, a website as well. They can look at it, uh, rasnaatreya.com. So it's R-A-S-A-N-A-A-T-R-E-Y-A.com. Fantastic. Thanks so much for your time, Rasana. That was great. Thank you so much for having me here, Joyahana.